wanna. Never mind. I don't wanna dig myself a big hole. Raiden Trad. This is actually the first Raiden game released on the home console. This port of the game, however, is disappointing. It's slow, sluggish, the music is uninspired. It would seem like a very rushed port, but I mean the Genesis version is better and it's also more rare. The SNES version not so much because it's a poor port. However, if you really need a Raiden fix and you don't have a computer that can run main good enough, just get the SNES version. It, it'll, it'll soothe out your fix. Okay, this is based off an arcade game by Midway. The reason why THQ back during this time was in charge of this port, I have no idea. Anyways, when I was a kid, me and my friend Steve used to crash out the car and laugh at the replays. However, now if you play it, it's one of those games that don't stand the test of time. It's slow, it's choppy, and very hard to play. But I kept the Skips video sticker on it. So that's the same game I played when we were kids. So you, you gotta keep that. The nostalgia in games is a one powerful force that you, you have to go with. Cybernator. This is also known as Assault Suits Vulcan in Japan, which I think is based off an anime or comic or something. Anyways, this is a butcher. This is a butchered translation of that same game. The cutscenes are missing from the Japanese version, and the part where the this is a spoiler. The ending of the game where the guy shoots himself in the head in Japanese is also censored because he commits suicide because he's about to be arrested. And who wants to be arrested? Rather just kill yourself and get away and and not deal with the piece of shit judicial system that we have in this country. But that's just my opinion anyways. Mario Paint. Which is, I'm glad I showed you this cartridge. Because, well, here, I'll be honest. I own two of them. This was given to me by a friend. And this was bought. And you're like, oh, do you have the mouse and the pad? Does this answer your question? So I can play the little, the little fly swatter game. Mario Paint is one of the most funnest games you can ever play. It allows you to be creative. I used to make porno sounds and, and shit in the game. There's one sound effect where it goes, eh -eh. and if you put it on the lowest note, it goes, uh uh. And what I used to do is draw a dick in a vagina and then go, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Holy shit, my mom got pissed when I showed her that. <laughs> oh man, it's just nostalgic talking about all these games I used to play with friends and show shit. That's why I love Super Nintendo, it holds a lot of memories for me. And that also has some of the greatest games of all time. This is an excellent game. I mean this. The only problem with this is it lacks a save game feature, which was needed, damn ocean. However, the graphics and sound were excellent. And this was the first SNES game to have a first-person view. The year, or a few months after this was released, Wolfenstein 3D was released, and you had a full 3D game. Well, it's actually 2D, but why nitpick? This was actually released in the Genesis, I just found out recently, called SV4. This is called Firepower 2000. You guys remember the game Silkworm for the NES, made by Sammy? This is actually, I would call this a sequel. Because you use the same vehicles, it's just different. It's made by a different company, it's Sunsoft. And the original game was made by Sammy. But who knows, maybe they bought the rights. It plays just like Silkworm, except it's overhead, instead of side scroll. So, I don't know. Angelico outdid itself with this game. Operation Logic Bomb. I would call this Metal Gear 3. Except a hell of a lot harder, because all the bosses will whoop your ass faster than you can say my mama. <laughs> no joke, though. The game is extremely hard, but it's excellent. Great music and graphics and sound, and it'll keep you on your toes. Definitely worth a pickup if you ever see it. My favorite Castlevania of all time I'm holding in my hand right now. Super Castlevania 4 is nothing short of a masterpiece. 
great bosses and graphics, nice effects, and excellent gameplay. You cannot get any better than Castlevania 4. I mean that. I love this game. It's easy, but it's great. I wonder if the Japanese version is harder. Someone tell me if it is. Oh, wow. This was sticking on one of the back of my games. I'll, I guess I'll show this off. Yay, it's a Mega Man 2 sticker. I was sticking on one of my cartridges. Huh. Which was... Uh, one thing I hate about Ultimate MK is the cheap AI. This is no exception. The AI in Ultimate MK and the SNES version, any version, as a matter of fact, is cheap as fuck. The Saturn version was probably the only version I can think of at the top of my head that wasn't as cheap, but it was pretty damn close. You'd still lose a couple matches with, without fail. I don't like games that make you cheat to win which is what MK Old School is known for. I consider this a gem, believe it or not. Skulljagger Revolt of the Westicans. Side scroll hack and slash. The graphics are a little cheesy and so is the music and sound, but the game is fun. It's worth a playthrough. We've threw a couple, actually. It's fun. It doesn't need to be, you know, graphically impressive or nifty to be a great game. If it's fun, that's all that matters to me. Another great game. Most of you might have this on your virtual console on the Wii. I have the cartridge, so I don't have to worry about that. True masterpiece. When you get Nintendo and Square together, a masterpiece is made of epic proportions, and that game is no exception. We're almost done. Yeah, good things come to an end. If I haven't put you to sleep already. I can't say many great, I can't say hardly anything bad about this game except the American version was rushed and ported wrong. Some of the colors change when the characters walk around, and some of the music that was in the Japanese version is also missing. But, but, as an American release, this is probably the best Double Dragon to date because of the different moves and combos in the game, and the different, you can actually grab the hands of your enemies that punch you and you can retaliate. This was deep as a as a side scroll beam up, but it was slow. Nonetheless it was two players and it played like the, the graphic style to me was Streets of Rage esque. Oh super R type. How you made me lose sleep and make me angry to the point of ripping off my wall. Seriously, this game is brutally hard on every aspect. To those who beat this game without cheating, my hats go off to you because I cannot beat this game. I have to use a state select code to get the worm and, or the last boss bot video or whatever his last name is. Whatever the the video empire's last boss. I think his name is Worm or something. I can't remember, but I beat the game doing that right and I saw the ending, but. I cheated. Yeah, go ahead. Put me down. I don't care. Whatever. Quintet, who made Act Razor, made this game, and it is nothing more than a great masterpiece. This plays a lot like a Zelda game would. If it was like Zelda 4 or something, this would definitely be it. You got different swords and spells and awesome gameplay, and it actually steals some of the ideas from Act Razor, but it was made by the same company. And I, so I'm sorry to say, but it's not Enix who made this game. It was Quintet, a small company that didn't have publishing rights on the SNES. Therefore, Enix published their games over here, which was a good idea. I don't know what happened to them. They probably died a very horrible death, which is most good companies do. Konami said it. I'm going to say it. Contra 3 is, not, is the best Contra ever made, next to 4. Because this game has everything a Contra game should have. Multiple gun, multiple selections of guns. You can hold two guns at a time and use them both at the same time. Has cool Mode 7 effects that Jim Powers shamelessly ripped off on some of its stages. And then some. Truly an epic game. I like the first three Contra games. Beyond that, they don't hold a special place in my heart. Four, on the other hand, was a step in the right direction. 
Here's a classic game I used to play on the Macintosh, and the Super NES version beats it tenfold. It's called Spectre. It has the classic version of the game and a remade version of the game. You can have great sound effects, and uh, or you can have the classic sound. The game does not have vector graphics. It has um, the polygons. It's a, one of those endless high score games, which is pretty good. I like it. <laughs> there was a lot of controversy with this because a lot of people didn't play because do that old fuck in the front of the game. This is also a shmup. A very good one at that. It's slow in some parts, but it's a good game. If you like any shmup like Gradius and all that, you'll like it. It's a little slow paced, but I'm pretty sure you can get hang the hang of it and enjoy it. Believe it or not, this is actually a very good game. Made by Sales Curve and published by THQ. It's a running gun game, and he also had these 3D parts of the game where you fly around in cyberspace. And there's parts where you get to shoot enemies in cyberspace. The game is really interesting, but hard. Really a good THQ game. This is when THQ started making decent games for the Super NES and other systems and the like. Like games like Wayne's World and Home Alone. Terrible, terrible, terrible. This game has a cult following. I don't know why. This game is insanely unfairly hard. But I can see, I guess, in, in I guess in a, in a hardcore sense, why this would be a game made for people who are interested in cult classics. For this, it, the re, it's very hard. I'll never beat this game. It's it's way too hard. Graphics are good and the music's good though. But the gameplay is just, oh my god, it's brutally hard. I'll never beat it. Never. It's too hard. Sorry. Okay, this is the worst shmup ever made. I think, if memory serves me, you only have one life and that's it. No continues, nothing. It's crap. Bought it for two bucks, though. What do you want? Hardball free. Baseball. Simple. The music sucks. But the gameplay's decent. Genesis version was faster though, so stick with that version. Uh, One of the hardest fighters I've ever played on a console. Art of Fighting is not that great of a game. I'd rather play the Art of Fighting team on King of Fighters because the system is more balanced. Art of Fighting is unfairly cheap on any system. To Super NES especially. The Neo Geo version was playable to a sense, but it was still hard. Okay, the last three games. Arkanoid. You like Arkanoid? Of course you do. It's a classic game of ball and paddle. This game will knock your ass off and it's extremely long. It has a password system so you can save your progress. Very fun game and it was one of the last games released on the SNES. Which was a very sad time for me. Let me get this out of its plastic. Yes, Killer Instinct, the best fighter. It's my favorite fighting game of all time next to Street Fighter. I like the combo system and the soundtrack. Some say that, can't, that Killer Instinct 3 is making its way to Xbox. We'll have to see. Even if it does, I don't care. I may not play it because, well, I'm a Nintendo fanboy. So, yeah, I know. I can play on my brother's Xbox if he gets it, but chances are I won't play it much. Because it'll be uninspired just like every other damn game made today. Actually, I got more games I gotta push my hearts out of the way to get to them, though. Because they're still in boxes. Okay. Top Gear. Great racing game. I actually heard this was made by the same team that created Lotus Turtle Challenge. That game sucked, though. Top Gear was a more enjoyable version. Top Gear 2. Also a great game. Actually, I like this better than the first one because it doesn't have the split screen and doesn't have that piece of shit red card that drains you of all your fucking health. Or, I mean, feel. Excuse me. I apologize. Earthworm Gen 2. And you know the amazing thing about this? I bought this seal for $12.99. And it's still got all its inbox credentials, like the manual. Got that, yeah. 
Yep, I got this brand new off eBay for 12 bucks.